Hereditary angioedema is an uncommon condition that may be potentially serious, uh, can lead to potentially life-threatening complications, fatalities may occur, and the condition is frequently misdiagnosed. So one of the messages is that, there, that providers should have a high index of suspicion for hereditary angioedema when they encounter patients who have recurrent episodes of angioedema without urticaria, particularly when such patients have a positive family history. A number of new agents have recently been released and have been approved by the FDA, which have dramatically changed the management of this condition. And these agents are effective and safe for management of acute episodes and for short-term and long-term prophylaxis. All patients with hereditary angioedema should have an individualized action plan and availability on demand of effective agents that can treat angio angioedema attacks. When such patients who are managed with a regimen of on-demand treatment don't achieve the goals of management and continue to have ongoing impairment of their quality of life, such patients would be candidates for long-term prophylaxis. Well, there are a number of, of areas in which uh, the evidence is lacking. For instance, we don't have comparator studies, not only among the newer agents that have been released, but also in uh, appropriate studies that um, have uh, an appropriate amount of methodologic rigor, uh, comparing treatment with these newer agents to treatment with agents which have previously been used, including attenuated androgens, fresh frozen plasma, uh, or, anti, um, uh, or agents such as Amicar that would affect the coagulation cascade, um, which generally are not preferred for hereditary angioedema, compare, at least have not been compared with attenuated androgens. But with regards to all the agents that, that have been reported to be efficacious for management of these patients, uh, there, there really are um, a paucity of high quality studies that would lead to evidence-based recommendations. So a lot of the recommendations which exist are, are consensus-based. These newer agents have, have come on the market more recently. Um, and I think as, as we have gained experience with them, uh, you know, I think that, that providers have been impressed not only with their efficacy and safety, but also with their capacity to dramatically improve quality of life, uh, particularly in patients who were, were continuing to have a refractory course and were candidates for long-term prophylaxis. Well, the other, the other condition that, that merits mention here um, because it's within the category of what we would call bradykinin-mediated angioedema would be angioedema related to ACE inhibitors. This occurs in about one in a thousand patients for whom an ACE inhibitor is prescribed. Uh, tends to be more common in um, smokers, in women, um, less common in diabetics, and it's, it's actually much more common than angioedema related to C1 inhibitor deficiency because of the uh, f frequency with which ACE inhibitors are prescribed. So when a patient develops angioedema related to ACE inhibitors, similar to the situation in patients who have C1 inhibitor deficiency, the commonly used medications for the treatment of angioedema of other causes, such as allergic angioedema, which would include epinephrine, antihistamines, corticosteroids, these agents are not efficacious. Uh, again, we have a paucity of data regarding the utility of these newer agents, uh, including plasma-derived C1 inhibitor, ecalantide, icatabant, in, in the setting, but there are, there are some reports in the literature uh, that these agents may have efficacy, but there's, a, there's clearly a need uh, for more studies in this area to document the therapeutic utility of these newer agents for patients with ACE inhibitor-induced angioedema. So there are two types of hereditary angioedema. There's a type of hereditary angioedema in which there, in which there is a, um, a um, deficiency of C1 inhibitor, uh, a type 1 comprising 85% of cases in which the C1 inhibitor level is low, type 2 
15 percent of cases in which there uh, is a normal level of C1 inhibitor but uh, C1 inhibitor function is deficient. Then there is a second type of hereditary angioedema that has been recognized more recently uh, with normal C1 inhibitor levels in which all the laboratory studies including C4, C1 inhibitor level, C1 inhibitor functional assay, they're all normal. So there are two types. One type is a type that has been linked to a gain of function mutation in factor 12. The second type doesn't have that mutation um, and it's a, it's a condition that may be heterogeneous, may be a number of uh, genetic defects, but in order to, di to diagnose that condition, uh, patients uh, need to have a positive family history. Again, a positive family history of recurrent episodes of angioedema without concomitant urticaria affecting extremities, abdomen, and or oropharynx, larynx. This is a condition similar to ACE inhibitor-induced angioedema that, for reasons we don't understand clearly, tend to have a predilection for affecting the oropharynx and the larynx.